All right, so in this one, we're going to talk about creating floors for a second. I kind of went over it a little bit too fast, and you guys might have missed a lot of things. Um, if you're new to the channel, this is kind of a series of little modular environment art pieces that we're doing. And so it all starts with the grid video, so go check that one out, and then come back to this one if you want. And you can also check out the channel playlist. I'm putting these all in the playlists for uh, easy reference. But nonetheless, uh, the floors I went over way too fast, so I showed that you could create a plane, and hey, that's a floor. Generally speaking, yes. Um, however, I did mention it in one video. Extruding it a tiny, tiny amount helps keep uh, any walls that might be underneath it from clipping up through it. So you could try doing that. However, uh, what I actually do is I offset this to just like a wall. And this right here creates a little bit of a complication because what ends up happening is, is if you do have a wall, so let's create one real quick. Um, your doors are going to become smaller because of that, right? So we got a three meter wall, I bevel it. With here, let's try a 1.2, right? So normally I'd add a loop cut, um, set the wall height to something like 2.3 or the door height, right? And so, yeah, you can see right there, that's 10 centimeters shorter now because of that. So I'll actually just bump this up uh, 10 centimeters a little higher. So um, this does actually snap back to the grid too. So that's nice, right? The 10 centimeter grid anyways. And so that works. Now you have to offset your staircases and any other things as well. So staircase, generally speaking, come up the same amount of 0.15 if that's what you're choosing to go with. Still have your runs at 30 centimeters. And um, separate it real quick. There's a pivot point over here. Those are backwards right now, but let's go ahead and vertex snap. Try that again. Let's see if I can get it to actually snap. Yeah, you can see, <laughs> it doesn't like snapping, does it? Let's turn it to active. Make that the active element, and we'll snap it there. We'll just do a straight staircase in this case. You see now it runs up like so right and so it doesn't come back to the meter grid let's flip all these for make it a little simpler to see so if you had a wall I'm just going to extend this out so we can see where that height runs to right at two floors snap Back to the grid here. It's that one. Okay. And so um, we can see what's going on here now, right? This is going up. And if we had another floor tile set here on the grid, one meter grid snap, put it over here. Hey, it lines up. Uh, the only problem is now you have to. Place this pivot point back where it needs to go, right? And that will allow you to continue to work. No problems. Okay. So this will snap to a meter now. If it was a split staircase, you could still do the same thing. So if you were to cut this in half and rotate it around, that'll work out. Now, this is good for the floor itself, but what happens when you have ceilings and you have kind of special case floors, right? Uh, so a lot of times you don't need these additional polygons. They usually get cold. Might have a little section that comes out like this. We'll make it one meter for this example, but it might. I'm going to press inset. I'm going to hold control, push it down. I hit uh, B to get rid of those sides is there. Let's say we're doing something like this. Okay, and on the top, press all in here, flip it. Let's say there's a, uh, you can see here this isn't scaling uh, inwards, hit B again. Let's say we got something like this, like a little grate we're going to create. I'm going to uh, press Y, make this face, subdivide it. Before we subdivide it, let's put a loop cut right here. Grab those two faces and we can subdivide them together now. This will make a little bit more of a square pattern. 
do something like that. Control I. You see when I control I, it selects all this other stuff because it's part of the same mesh. So I press Shift G, select area. I adjust the values here a little bit. So it's only selecting these areas. Press X, delete faces. Grab this. I'm using selection method uh, linked. This is shortcut I've set up so I can do this. But when you select one piece of the mesh and then select linked, selects everything that's part of that mesh that's detached from the other parts. It's different than hitting L, so I just that out. But I can do that, work with the same meshes a little bit easier on the same same object. All right, so maybe we have something like that. A little great, something going on. Maybe we'll set it a little. Extrude it up a tiny bit. Maybe these sections we can inset a little. Also extrude up a tiny bit. So maybe we could put floor tiles there or something else, whatever the case may be. All right. Now this will obviously run well this way. No problems. But what happens when you have a ceiling tile, right? So the ceiling tile, in this case, isn't too heavily affected, but we still may get issues with uh, lighting and stuff because of that little bit there. Actually, not sure why that came through. Tiny little out. Let's push it flat there. So it, it still might have issues, but a lot of times it'll poke through. Like if this was, let's say you wanted like a deeper section here. Something like that. Right? Obviously an issue because we have clipping now. So this is more or less a, a socket and plug situation. You create a socket and then the other thing plugs into it. Uh, I call this clamshelling, though, just to kind of differentiate it in my mind, that um, these two meshes just work in unison with each other. And um reminds me of like a solidify or like a clamshell. Right? So we might need to do something like this to just incorporate that top piece into the ceiling of the other piece. That way they line up. So you can think of everything on a certain axis. Like a um, the normal of the grid, it's supposed to be coming out of. So the normal face, the face normal, right, coming away from the grid. You think of those as additive or addition pieces. You think of um, ones that go back into the grid as subtraction pieces. So this place, this piece is subtracting, right? And it's more or less uh. You know, adding on one side and then subtracting on the other. <laughs> so we need to create something, just hold it there. And this is quite good because now we can make some pretty cool floors that also work on multi levels without getting everything geeked up, you know? So if we need pipes in here and stuff, or wires, or whatever, little types of fluids, or whatever, we can do that. Also, have a little bit of fun with it. Actually, let's not do that. Let's duplicate it three times. Okay. And so, little things like that become possible without completely messing up your system. So, place this up here. Happened to snap right? It probably did. Yeah, it did. Can of course run it. So our staircase we probably don't want it right here necessarily. Staircases oftentimes get thinner, so you know. Probably better to join these. Let's join them quick. Place a pivot point on the grid. Let's delete. It's not a good idea to get too carried away and start trying to do some kind of set dress. Not ready for it. I'm going to go over that here in a little bit, but. I want this origin point somewhere over here, right? There we go. That's right. Cool.
So we can start to do that number. Push it all the way out. This one will up. Now we're starting to get the idea of how we can work with this stuff and make it look pretty unique, original. Now you can see here, we can actually see a hole, right? Because there's no other floor in front of it. So that could potentially be a problem. And this is why it's sometimes useful to think about these kind of things and lay them out as you see appropriate. Because this piece may need that side face in order to hide that little gap. So you might even have just a little side piece made that could become a part of that. Snap to it. So now that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And then of course you can always do handrails and stuff on your floor as well, or you can overhang them off the side. So you could, you know, if you're doing like a catwalk, catwalks you can make generally a little bit thinner. And then you can have railing next to it or whatever the case may be. It may take a little bit of trial and error to figure out how, how all these are going to work together. How you set it up is completely up to you. So it's not set in stone like a one-way fits-all type deal. Really, really have the opportunity to just kind of go with what you think works best in your situation. As long as you're sticking to that 10 centimeter grid, right, up to a meter or more if needed, should be all right. I think, personally, I think um, anything below 10 centimeters is just a little bit too much, generally speaking. It might be good for small granular details of an object, but not necessarily. Uh, might not be that great for a whole unit. See here how that also matches up right there. So this is another little interesting area because you may not actually need this face at all. You could cover it up with another mesh, right? That face would be redundant and not needed. It should be cold because you'll you'll never see it with something like that. Therefore, uh, you know, just one of these, let's say, put a loop cut here at the end. Line it up to the grid as well. We had a rail sort. Really helps to have a character model to figure out how high to place your rails and stuff. Because even if you could use real world dimensions, but sometimes your characters just look a little bit off next to them. As you can see, we can just place this origin point directly first. Control period, do that. Now we have more or less a rail system going in. We rotate this one 90 degrees. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on here? Why did it move? I'm not placing it correctly. Why did it hit Control Z by accident? All right, so 90 degrees. This could potentially work, um, but you may also have like Z-finding clipping issues, right? So sometimes you might need to make a corner unit. There's just no way to get around that sometimes, right? So in this case, you might take two of these. Now you could go smaller if you wanted, down to a meter, but you might take something like this, combine it. A little trick is you can Pick the mesh, do a select all by trait interior faces. Sometimes this gets them, sometimes it doesn't, but you can X delete them. In case you can see where the issue is arising, right? There it is. Let's see if I start moving things around, it starts, starts getting a little crazy. Sometimes you just gotta keep modeling up, figure out you need where and how and why and all that 
coal what you can. In this case, everything is acting kind of good. Let's press forward slash isolate real quick. I go ahead and delete entire bottom here. It's annoying me. Fix this area first. Okay. Obviously, this is not correct. Okay. Merge it all. Double edges can usually be the hardest things to find. Sometimes the vertices won't merge either, so I like these double edges. It could be a little bit of a problem. In this case, I think we got it all now. Should be able to extrude it down. I have weird normals for a second. Because this face is backwards, I think. Calculate outside. Let's see what we got. Okay. Looks like we're in business now. Again. Ah. Didn't bring it down far. Right. This becomes a pretty fluent thing to get used to doing this. See here, once again, that's not that's not gonna work out in that corner. Doesn't appear to line up either, necessarily. Quite the way we would want it. So it works well for repeating going this direction, but not these corners. But once again, we probably could take this. Just snap it together somehow. Got to use active element here. Because it doesn't want to snap because it's a group. There we go. So this could be like one section. You could consider these transition pieces. Where they um, kind of skew. Uh, on a, skew a direction anyways. Before we get to that. I want to isolate this. I want to delete that face. Just want to make sure it's gone. Do the same for this one. Because if you do that correctly, these should just line up, join them together, merge it all. There we go. Yeah. And so now, just to kind of demo what I'm talking about, it skews things. It also works here, right? So we can keep making this into a floor or something, make it larger, right? Keep this little section running out. See where that's going. Might have to add just some support structure to it. How you set that support structure up is entirely up to you. Maybe like a 0.25 meter cube. Might want to place it right there. See if we can't get this going. Okay, so that's not too bad. We could definitely do more to make this more interesting. Maybe put this every four sections. Like that. And then you'd have to repeat this kind of process for rails going all the way down next to this, perhaps, and everything else. And um, it could be kind of daunting. It could be a little challenging right, the first time you do it, or the first couple times you do it, at least. But before you know it, this kind of just works out. It makes a lot of sense. Don't start set dressing it too much. You're going to find a certain point that you're doing too much, and they're not instances. A lot of times you'll just duplicate to test things, but um, you know when you start setting up everything, you really need to start instancing. Uh, because you can actually, believe it or not, you can actually take instances in Blender and put them into Unity or Unreal Engine. And so you can actually export this whole scene out as a... Um, even if it was like fully set dress, you can export it out and all, everything that's instanced here would end up instanced inside of Unreal Engine. 
and uh, it would come in with only the bare minimum amount of assets so long as you have proper naming conventions and everything here as well so we, we're not getting into that in this video but naming all of this very appropriately uh, is extremely important all right but this is just kind of a quick easy way to approach doing floors and things like that because we still have room here to play now right so if if we needed to for example set all this a little bit bevel this a little bit when i press uh actually let's do a shift g select co-planner it should select only the things that are flat with it right uh, maybe just deselect here here oh you know what no let's deselect these could potentially do something like this as well where we inset it inwards hit b so we don't do the edges you'll see we get holes in the floor though okay so you got to think about these kind of things when you do this might not that might not work too well right unless you have the same same tile next to it might end up with holes over here That's a potential. So you have to really be careful with what you're doing. Generally, I try to keep everything as flat as possible. That's that's what found it's easier. But it's not always necessary either. Could just loop cut this. Your inset. Bevel these loops. Something like this might be a little bit better off. Might be, might be better off doing this where you inset, hold control, move it up a tiny little bit. That those. That might give you a better uh, system there. So standard height doesn't ever really get affected that 10 centimeter offset, but you can always add kind of details to this. Most people don't think you can do this because it. Um, Seems like it could be a runaway train when you're trying to place objects on top of it that you want on the grid. And that's not really true because when you create, let's say we had a crate. Let's make it a two meter crate real quick. One meter crate. Say we had a crate. We had the origin point here on the bottom. I think you would line it to the grid and then you end up with this issue. Right, it sits inside the floor. That's not really true because a lot of times what ends up happening is you place things in game engines. They actually sit on top of the normal, not necessarily the grid. So when you're placing things, it's usually snapping to something like the surface here. So I'm using surface snap with machine tools. See, like maybe maybe that'll get geeked up right on a certain polygon, but. Normally you can get away with this, no problems. Okay. Get a stack of these somewhere. Certainly do that. That's why you also put the origin point on the bottom because you can scale things. Also place them on top of each other. Okay. So that's it for this one, I think. You know, play around with these ideas, see what works for you, what doesn't, and uh, it'll help. It'll help you out. You know, it'll help you realize that like you don't have to make super repetitive, boring stuff like we did here, but just playing around with these these kind of uh, units you can skew them around a little bit and end up with different results. You can like bevel corners. So in this case, this is more of like an industrial thing, but you can sort of certainly make like uh, more modern type um, kits and things like that. So works in a lot of different ways. You wanted this to be like all stone somehow. I don't probably do that. One last thing though, this here is really kind of mundane and boring. Go back to uh, grid snapping, global grid. Could make little caps for these. So you 
we might be able to get away with running it to the three meter section. Right. Placing this somewhere else, it doesn't matter really. And it's an inset holding control. So can potentially separate this. So we could center our line here at the bottom. Origin point. Center our line this one here at the bottom. So now we have potentially a cap, right? Make this look however we want. Okay, like a special piece. Still lines up to the grid. Right? So that's pretty easy. Can run this up further as well. Just slightly off the grid here. So we can do that. We can have them intersect each other. You do this one up. Try to make like a little piece like that. If you're clever, you can probably get away with using this as a base as well. Down there. So this might actually snap to a uh, 10 centimeter grid section, just so you know. Not necessarily the meter section, so the whole pole itself might become a, a piece, right? Then you can uh, snap that to a meter, something along those lines. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm going to be doing more like this. It takes a little bit of time to uh, think about what to show off and what to create because there's so many different little avenues and things we could approach and try to figure out how they work. So, anyways, check it out the next one. Take care, guys.